name is Thea. As a child, I lived in a world of concrete and steel, as do all children who live in cities. I played the games of my childhood, sometimes breaking rules, going to forbidden places. Even to be above the ground was sometimes forbidden. But I love to be alone with a feeling of space around me. What accident of time and place brought me here, I do not know, for I played an innocent game. But since the day I found that secret room, I have searched to find the place again, to find someone else who may have seen it. For what I found there changed my life. I will never forget that day. found myself in the strangest place. A world of tangled shapes such as I had never seen. Everything around me seemed to be climbing upward towards the sky reaching up to a light which seemed so soft and gentle compared to my own world. As my eyes became accustomed to the light, I went in search of someone or something which could explain where I was and what was happening to me. was something else I did not understand. A presence, a powerful life force which I could feel but could not see, and a feeling that I was being observed. I felt small and fragile as if in a dream, and yet despite the strangeness of everything around me, I was not afraid. Hey, where am I? 
At this point, I became completely confused. At last, I had found one of my own kind, and he had disappeared without explaining anything at all. Although I had no food, I found water to quench my thirst. It seemed to be everywhere. There were so many new things to see here, such wonderful things, that I soon forgot all about looking for help. This was a peaceful place, a magical place. I knew I had to find food, but had no idea what to look for. That sieve, were you? That sieve is a very rare and precious seed of the rainforest. It's called the Indio Spermin. Some people believe it is the beginning of all flowering and fruiting trees we have in the rainforest. In the whole world, in fact. So it is a very amazing and wonderful seed. Everything in the rainforest. In his eyes, I had done something wrong. But I could not understand why I should not take the seed when there seemed to be so much of everything. Starts growth for new trees, new plants, which all the birds and animals they live off. Now, if we start taking things out of there, we're upsetting that cycle. We're upsetting the balance. We're upsetting everything. Soon there'll be nothing. Grown up seemed to be the same no matter where you were. I didn't even have a chance to ask what I was supposed to eat. Then I heard a sound that was vaguely familiar.
I felt as if I'd gone back in time. It was a house of some sort, built above ground, as they were in olden times. How quaint it was. The sounds tickled my toes and made me smile. I recalled some of the stories I'd been told about olden times. Once upon a time, they'd say. Then there'd be something hideous. Wicked witches and princes turned into toads. At least there were none of those horrible things here. Daintree Wilderness. Why are you here? Oh, well, I came to say hello to this wonderful tree. It's so big it has these buttresses to hold it up. How long would it take to go? Well, to get this big it'd take a thousand years at least. At last, fact, here was someone explaining things in a way I could understand. Years. Really? I was in a place called a rainforest, the Daintree Rainforest. Can you tell me she told me a lot about the here? forest, but still yeah, nothing which could help me understand can why I was here and why so many strange things were happening. But when she started talking about all the other creatures who live here, I soon forgot all about my own problems. It's not found in the world, there's lots, there's just so many things that live here. What's your favorite animal? I really like them all. They're all really special and really beautiful. And I like the whole forest, which is all the things that live in it and yeah. all together. Would you like to live here? No, I, I like coming out here and I really like looking at the trees and the forest and the animals and everything, but I, it's their home and they, they fit into it really well and we don't. Yeah. I, you know, so I'd rather... We've got most of the world and they need some. Can you take me to find some animals? Okay.
The only creature I was able to touch was the green tree frog. It felt cold and wet, just like me. Can you feel his heart? It was the first time that I'd ever held a living creature within my own hands, and its tiny heart was pumping as fast as my own. I felt so happy I made a wish. I wanted to become one of the creatures of the forest, just to feel what it was like. I tried to think like a frog. Think wet, said Rosemary. Think green. Suddenly, like magic, I began to understand what it was like to be a living part of the rainforest. I felt such a power, as if I could burst out of my own skin to become any creature I chose. Now I had to see more and more of the forest. As a whole, I began to understand, far beyond my normal powers of comprehension, some of the things I had been told. Here was a place undisturbed for millions of years. A place created by nature in such perfect harmony that every plant and creature, no matter how small, influenced the balance of that harmony. A place teeming with hidden life, holding secrets yet to be revealed perhaps the origins of life itself. A gentle place. A magical place. A place that did not seem to exist in my own time. Nighttime in the rainforest seemed as busy as the day. I was wakened at night to find creatures I had not seen before. A man completely lost in some strange ritual. Sometimes I found the ways of rainforest people difficult to understand. to weigh and to see what's in her pouch and everything like that. How do you know it's nine? Oh, uh, she's got a mark on her ear that I put over there when I first caught it, which is about three, four years ago now. And I'd like to keep all my possums marked and named so that I can tell exactly who's who. And um, if you hang on to this bag for a minute, we'll weigh her 
Why do you weigh her? Oh, that's to get an idea of how healthy she is at the moment and how much food there is in the forest for her. If there's not much food in the forest, then she won't weigh very much. Have you got your hands away from down there now? Yeah. The man was one of the scientists who chose to study and record the minute details of life in the rainforest. And he seemed to take more than a personal interest in his work. Well, now, we want to have a look whether there's any baby in her pouch. So we'll open up and... Uh, she's behaving nice and quietly at the moment. And she is. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, they're a lovely animal. And you see, she's got a little mark in her ear over there, and that's the mark that I put in there when I first caught her. And all the animals I've got in the forest have got names and their marks, so that I can tell who's doing what when kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Now, she got me baby in her pouch. Do you want to feel over there for me? I'll control her back legs. Do you have a little feel over there? Any lumps over there? No. No lump. No baby at this time. Lovely long furry tail. <laughs> well, we've weighed her and we've checked her pouch. So that really, that's all that we have to do. And you can have a little cuddle. Ah, <gasps> oh, it was bad luck. She didn't mean to do it. There you are. If you like to stand up and go close to the tree, she'd probably jump onto the tree for you. There she goes. There's so many wonderful things to see here. That's true. In a beautiful forest like this, it is full of life. The first indication I had that something was wrong was when I found the road. Of course, I did not know it was a road, as it looked nothing like the roads that I knew. Nor could I have imagined any vehicle which could traverse it, nor why it should wish to. I had the strongest feeling that it was not even safe to be there, as it was difficult to walk on, but I was curious to see what lay beyond. My feeling proved to be correct, because in next to no time, the strangest of all the strange things happened. <laughs> the ground beneath me had suddenly disappeared. It seemed darker here than in the rainforest. And as I struggled to find my way back, it was difficult to work out which direction to take. But I soon met someone. It seemed my luck was changing at last. Ah, oh, hello. Did 
Do you get washed down from the forest too? No. I've been looking at the fringing reef. What's that? Come and see. With my newfound friend, I entered a wonderland under the sea. A coral reef lying at the edge of the rainforest, every bit as interesting and beautiful as the forest above. I've never done anything like that before. It's like another world. Mmm, it is a wonderful one. And it's a unique world too. It's one of the few places in the world where the rainforest and the fringing reef are side by side. But the reef is under threat. You see, when they put the road through, it opened up the canopy. And now there's weeds and heavy rain is coming in and the heavy rain loosens the soil, washes down the hill like you did, and lands on the fringing reef. Did you see that place where I stirred up the mud? Well, when that is thick enough, it'll smother and kill the coral. Who's responsible? We all are. You and me, and all of us living on this earth. We have to care for the earth, because we have to share it with all other things, plants, animals. And if we don't look after it, we lose our right to live here. Hello, stranger. Hello. How do you do? Nice day? Bye-bye. Of all the rainforest people I met, he was the most interesting. Certainly the most eccentric of all, with his funny way of dressing and his strange talk. Hello, following me. Hey. That is a 
bouncing stone. Each day, he would come down to the beach to see what the rain had washed down from the forest. It told him a story of what was happening up there. Each seed and pod, a piece of evidence which seemed to satisfy some need in him. That is it's a big matchbox bean, one parcel of it. And take them out. Oh, nice one. If you wrap them on your clothes, it gets hot and nice shiny. Here's the black walnut. Can you eat it? No, no, you would get sick. Mm, there's a black walnut with, an, uh, with a skill, skin still attached to it. And here, you got a little fruit from a mangrove, Sinometra. Have you lived here for long? Oh, about 28 years now. That's long enough, huh? He saw himself as living in an environment of which he was only a small part. The beach walks seemed to be his way of checking that everything was in order. Everything washes onto the beach and you get it here so you can see what is growing in the rainforest by going along the beaches. I could not hope to understand the forces at work here, nor what prompted the strange actions of those I met. Why'd you do that? Well, then can people, when they are coming here, they can see straight away what the tree is. This is a circle of my botanic gardens. This forest seemed to have a powerful effect on everyone who came into contact with it. Now, is this one? That night, I could not sleep. I could only think of the trees and animals I had grown to love, and of the violence which had been done to them. I could not understand this, for all the people I had met so far loved the forest. For the first time since I came to this place, I was afraid.
You're not afraid, are you? Don't be afraid. Come sit up here. Come on. This is a very friendly forest. Yes, it is. I was a little bit afraid when I first came to live here at Cape Tribulation. But this is a very special forest. This one cares for me. Cares for me like a mother does. It looks after me. Shelters me, feeds me. Heals me when I'm hurt. I know how you felt when you saw the trees falling. How do you know? I felt like that too. Some time ago, when they built a road through here. It felt like they were hurting my mother, my mother the forest. I heard her screaming when the bulldozers and chainsaws started cutting into it. And I couldn't block out the sound. I kept hearing it. It was horrible. But for a long time after, I was afraid to go in the forest. I thought she would do something to me because I thought I hadn't done enough to save her, to stop the bulldozer. But the forest doesn't think like that. It forgave me. It's a very special forest. I came upon the road once again. The forest seemed so perfect, I could not see why anyone would want to destroy it. Just to build a road. to the end of the road? No, not today. Why not? Oh, it's a little too far. I used to go through there in the early days to take people through. Anyway, we'll go for a little walk and I'll tell you about it. We used to go on these trips up through to Bloomfield. It's a long, nice walking trip. Yes, those walks were really wonderful in those days. We all enjoyed them. There were people from all over the world, you know, came on those walks. We'd be walking through the rainforest. You'd see these little birds. Animals come out and have a look at you, and away they go again. It is really wonderful to be part of nature. It is good to look out and see the lovely blue ocean, everything lovely and clean. That really made it. I really enjoyed those walks. Well, we were just part of part of it then. It was, it was good to see. Good to see something like that. And, uh, but uh, now, now it's all finished. I heard about the road going through, and uh, it's sad to see how it happened. I didn't want to come back to see it, you know, it, but I just had to. Just look at it. 
door finished now. This was where our little track used to go, you know? Up to here. And now the big scar right through. Every year, it'll get worse. Every year, more and more damage. What can we do? It's what had been. Look at the erosion. That all go down, out to the sea. Well, I must be off now. Hope to see you again someday. Who would do such a thing? Suddenly, I understood the enormity of what was happening here. Taking here. Isn't theirs for the taking? in different ways. How much time is left? Time is running out. <laughs> <laughs> 